All right guys, today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We are gonna go through my paddle journey. What I played with from when I first started playing pickleball till now. I'm also just kind of give you a quick kind of rundown of each of these paddles, like what I thought about them, kind of the reasonings of why I picked up the paddle and ultimately decided to either keep playing with it or put it down for something else. Links and codes for these paddles will either flash on the screen or you can find them in the description below. All right, let's get started. So I started playing pickleball more seriously back in early 2020, maybe late 2019, right around the pandemic, like many of you, where pickleball just kind of exploded. So the first thing that I picked up was a set from Pickleball Central. And in this set, I got four of these Kanga paddles with a net. And I literally just kept that in the back of my car. And everywhere that I went, I just wanted to tape up lines or go to a parking lot and just play with my friends if there wasn't a court available. I legit played with this like for a good couple months. You know, had the little strap you know, on my wrist. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda got made fun of. Whatever, they didn't say nothing after I spanked them. Damn! I don't really play with it anymore, but from time to time, I'll, I'll pick it back up. So finally I decided to upgrade my paddle, went to Pickleball Central again, and like I, I just couldn't imagine at the time at least paying more than maybe 50 to like 60 bucks for a paddle because I didn't know what was out there and what paddles should really behave and feel like. This is the second paddle that I picked up. It's the Rally Pyro 2 Pro. Basic standard paddle, pretty low power, I would say, and it was actually really loud. I did notice at this time, I started kind of flirting with the two-handed backhand, because at the time I was like, oh, I don't need to do two-handed backhand, so this is great, you know, right here. But then as I started playing better and better players, I, I noticed that I needed to put uh, a little bit more action on the ball from the, the baseline, at least with my drives on the backhand side, people were targeting that. And so I found myself choking up on it a bit. And I was like, okay, now I kind of need a little bit more power. And this is when I started really playing with some of the other brands. I started going to actual facilities and demo some of their paddles. And one of the first paddles that I picked up that I was just like enamored with was this one right here, the Engage Encore MX60. This is low key for me, a goaded paddle. This is the paddle that really just took me places. Fiberglass face, elongated handle, there's a little bit of texture on this. I could really get some spin on the ball. And till this day, I still like this paddle a lot. I think I went to my first tournament with this paddle. I signed up for 4 0. I got gold with this paddle right here. It was an indoor tournament. This paddle served me really well. My issues with this paddle was really the quality control. The edge guard, you know, it would come loose. And honestly, you know, Engage has a lifetime warranty on these things. I did have to send it in and get a new one a few times. Really not a big deal. That process was pretty easy. I don't know, I was just kind of sick and tired of that. So I wanted a better paddle, at least in terms of quality control. So that's kind of what led me to my next paddle, which is the Selkirk Invicta Amped. And I also got the Invicta Vanguard 1.0. I was demoing both of them to see which one I liked better. It came down to the amp. The amp just felt like it had more power. The colors are pretty dope. I'm all about this Electrify version right here. And they also had a lifetime warranty as well. And of course it's Selkirk. Like you don't think about pickleball without thinking about Selkirk. This paddle too also took me places. I went to my first big tournament, 2021. I went to the Texas Open 2021, played 4-0, got gold in singles, and then also played 4-0 doubles and silvered in that with this paddle. I will say though that I, I really didn't have any issues with this paddle. I really did enjoy it. I probably would have stuck with it, but as I was improving and now I started using two hands with my dinking and with my resets as well, I kind of wish I had more real estate in the handle department. So I started looking for other options that had longer handles. And at the time, my buddy Donko 
who I played singles with a lot. He played with Vulcan at the time. And then he got this paddle right here, which is the Vulcan V560 power. And I really enjoyed this paddle a lot. This is like my first power paddle, I would say. I've tried some other thin core paddles before. I think this is 13.5 maybe 14, I can't quite remember. I got this paddle, I just like the way that it tapers up here and it was just really comfortable for the two-handed backhand. And there was some weight to this paddle as well. I was hitting balls and speed ups just better than I've ever had in my pickleball career at the time. But right around this time is when I got tennis elbow. Like I played tennis for 18 plus years, 4-0 to 4-5, played USDA. I played with a heavy racket too. Wilson 6-1 tour, never ever had an issue with my elbow or shoulder or anything like that. But as soon as I switched to this paddle right here, I got tennis elbow. And I think part of the reason is because I was still kind of learning the game and trying things out and I was being really like wristy and trying to be fast going through and then stopping all of a sudden I really just didn't have my technique down. So basically that sidelined me for a bit, two, three months and finally when I got back into the swing of things and my elbow healed up i was like hmm should i go back to this one i don't know but ultimately i was still weary of my elbow issues so i started looking for another option and at the time this is when you know carbon was starting to get into the mix of things and starting becoming a hot paddle so i did flirt with the carbon 116 for a little bit and i did enjoy that paddle but ultimately i actually went back to good old faithful the engage on core mx 60 i went back to it because i played with this for a while and i found success with it and i never had elbow issues with this paddle right here in fact i played with it up until february 2022 i went to the ppa foot solutions in arizona so i moved up played four or five singles and i golded with this paddle right here but as i kept on playing with this same issues arose problems with the edge guard the handle was a little off like the wood or the piece they used to put on top of the handle it was not aligned perfectly so it felt awkward in my hand and of course around this time all the companies are now starting to experiment with raw carbon fiber paddles i really wanted a raw carbon fiber paddle it was all the rage engage came out with their pursuit series which i did try this is the Pursuit Ultra, um, but I did have the regular Pursuit as well. And honestly, between the two, I I thought I would really like the Pursuit, but I always went back to the Encore. I think it just had more pop and the feedback just felt more crisp and I felt like this was the better value and the better deal. And at the time, I really wasn't reviewing paddles. Companies weren't sending me paddles. So, you know, I had to spend my own money on these paddles and I just felt like it was not worth it to spend 200 at the time for a pursuit. So I stuck with the Engage Encore MX-60 because I was just kind of annoyed with the quality control with the Engage Encores, albeit I still love this paddle like to death. I wanted something also heavier and I've started experimenting with weight on my paddle and I just wanted like a better shaped handle and grip. This led me to the Diadem Warrior. Now, I heard some great things about the Warrior at the time. I felt like it was different and it, I mean, it just looked cool. I think out of all the paddles at the time, like this was the best looking paddle. I still think it, it's a great looking paddle. And with the Warrior, I know it wasn't perfect coming out of the gate. They had some quality control issues of their own. They said that they fixed it. I did get my hands on a few. What I really like about the Warrior is the handle and the handle shape. I felt like the circumference was like the right amount of girth like for me and the shape of it was really good and definitely a step up from the engage and also the weight the weight was around for eight five they just always came out of the box consistent i really valued the consistency at the time with the diadem warrior and i played with the diadem warrior for about a couple months leading up to maybe from March to June, I would say. Around this time is when Yola like just busted onto the scene. I did mess with the uh, Ben Johns Hyperion CFS 16 and I thought that paddle was absolutely amazing and incredible. It was a little head heavy and honestly, 
the reason why I didn't switch to it was for, first of all, it was expensive. I was like, man, 220 for a paddle. I was like, ah, I don't know about that. I was also scared for my tennis elbow because it was so head heavy. So I stuck with the Warrior for a decent amount of time. And then finally, in I think the summer, Diadem released the Warrior Edge. I don't have one on me, but it was basically a Gen 1 raw carbon fiber paddle from Diadem and decided to give the Warrior Edge a shot. Now, I will say when I got it, I was a little underwhelmed with it because I thought that it would be the like warrior like with but with just the raw carbon fiber face because I switched away from the warrior as well because the grit would wear off. I went with the warrior edge hoping that the grit, you know, because it's a raw carbon fiber would stick a little bit longer, which it did, but the paddle was fairly light. It was one of those paddles that I had to play with a lot more to really enjoy it and like it. And I did. Honestly, I felt with that paddle I could not miss with that paddle, but it did lack power and this is the time when I was hovering between 4.5 and like 5.0. I was starting to play up a little bit more and as soon as I started playing up a little bit more I was like man I need put away power. I could not put away balls to save my life. I didn't know if that was partly me or the paddle. It could also just be that my opponents are also just way better now and they're now just getting every single ball back. And around this time, I was also flirting with some of the Groovin paddles as well. This is, it wasn't this one, this is the Groovin Raw 16S, but I was playing with the 16H, which is their longer handle paddle. I really did like that paddle too. I was pretty close to switching to that one, but then my younger brother took that paddle, I was just getting him into pickleball, and he really liked that, so he took it. Around this time, this was like August, September, maybe beginning of October of 2022, I came back from three, almost basically three tournaments back to back. It was like a local tournament, and then I went to Atlanta APP, and then I went to PPA Atlanta, played 5-0. I wasn't feeling confident with my paddle, with myself. I just felt like I couldn't put balls away. So I went from a very soft paddle in the Warrior Edge, and I went with the Selkirk Invicta Power Hair. Exact opposite of the Warrior Edge. So this was one of the highest spinning paddles at the time. It had a lot of power. I used this paddle at the first minor league pickleball. I played for the Florida Smash. It's a good time. This thing is a beast when it comes to driving the ball, essentially, and it was really good for my singles game. However, my doubles game did suffer. All that work I put into like learning how to dink and reset, you know, just drop volley and all the touch game was pretty much lost with this paddle. I could not play doubles with this paddle to save my life. And this is around the time I started doing paddle reviews. And then this was actually my second. And then around this time, I started reaching out to more brands, more companies. Some of them would send me paddles, thankfully, because I had a relationship with Chris Olson from the Pickleball Studio. Shout outs to Chris. The next paddle that I got, I really liked and actually switched to. It is the Hyperion 14 millimeter CFS. This is essentially a Ben John's paddle, but in a 14 millimeter variant. It was a little bit more poppy, but it still felt controllable. It wasn't as head heavy as the 16 millimeter version. So this was kind of like an in-between. I didn't feel like it was as powerful as the, the power air, but I could dink and I could reset with it. I played really good with this paddle. I did add a little bit of weight here and here on the sides just to add some stability to the paddle. Now in my review of this paddle, I told people that it's a really good paddle, but you probably shouldn't buy it. And the reason was because the Solaire existed for what, 40 bucks less. And it's essentially the same paddle with a slightly different shape. It just is a little bit wider and a little less long. Obviously price is a big factor in my decision at the time when picking a paddle. And around this time, late 2022, this is when you started hearing about all these new manufacturers or, or new brands and companies getting into the space. And one of the first new companies and new paddles that I tried was this guy, the Legacy Pro. I reviewed this paddle very, very highly and one of the first thermal from paddles that I played with, it just felt different at the time. And that's why I reviewed it so highly. 
I really like this paddle. Obviously, I haven't played with it anymore because mine's delaminated. Um, you can feel that crunch in it. Oh yeah, can you hear that? When I took it to PPA Arizona earlier this year, I just felt like something was off. And at the time, I didn't know what was going on. A lot of us didn't know what was going on. We didn't know what the delamination was. These paddles were just getting hot and we're like, hey, what's going on? I ended up not playing with this paddle for the tournament. I guess some of the new legacies now, I feel like they play a little bit different than like when I first got it. And I don't know if they changed something up with the composition of the paddle or maybe it's because they switch manufacturers or something else. But I think the current legacy is still pretty good, but it's not as powerful as I guess the old one, I would say. I did bring a backup paddle. The backup paddle that I did play with was the Vatic Pro. See the Vatic, well, this isn't the Vatic, this is the Flash from Vatic, but I played with the regular Vatic. That paddle has done well for me as well. I really enjoyed that paddle too. After Legacy Pro, played with the Vatic Pro for a bit. That was a good paddle, I was testing it out. And I was also testing out the new Carbon 1X14 and the 1X16. These paddles right here are ridiculous. So when I got the 1X14 and 16, I instantly gravitated towards them. They have the longer handle, their thermal form got great spin. And uh, yeah, this was the new paddle of a choice at the time. I stuck with the 14 because I was still on the search for power, like more and more power, addicted to power, even though I didn't have the skills to tame that power. The Carbon 1X14 was the paddle of a choice for a while. Played amazing singles with it and doubles. I could play doubles with it, but I had to be focused. If I wasn't focused, especially if you're playing with the Dura, like this thing would pop up and I would just get smoked. And that is one of the reasons why I started putting down the Carbon 1X14. And I was about to go back to the 1X16. I didn't have one on me. I actually lent that 1X16 to my buddy Donko and he loved it. So I told him that he could have it and he could play with it. So I was stuck with the 1X14. And now around this time, as you know, uh, I've been doing a lot more paddle reviews and getting more paddles. And another company that had a lot of hype and rightfully so was 6-0. Finally got the 6-0 paddles at my door. Double Black Diamond 16, Double Black Diamond 14, and the regular Black Diamond. These are, in my opinion, still some of the best paddles on the market. I think they're built really well. Quality control is like solid. And if you want to hear more about them, you can check out my full review on the Double Black Diamond and the Black Diamond. Now here's the thing. As much as I liked the 6-0 paddles, they're not fully elongated, right? There's, there's a little bit of a difference that extra couple millimeters up here is just in my head. Maybe it affected the swing weight, but it did feel different. And I don't know, I just couldn't bring myself to switching to them or committing to them. Even though I tried, I was flirting with the idea of using the Black Diamond, which I think is one of the most powerful paddles on the market right now and still is for singles. And then I was gonna use the Double Black Diamond 16 for doubles. And these paddles, they felt good, they felt solid. I just couldn't come around to using them just because, I don't know, I guess it wasn't fully elongated. Some of you guys out there have been asking me to compare the Double Black Diamond 14 to the Double Black Diamond 16. And to be quite honest with you, most of the times 14 millimeter and 16 millimeter feels fairly different, but for these two paddles right here, I felt like the performance was almost identical. It's tough to see a difference. I think they perform the same, but they feel just a little bit different. This 14 millimeter right here feels a little bit more crisp and responsive in the ham, in the ham, in the hand, maybe not as solid. And the Double Black Diamond 16 just felt super solid. Something about it just like plows through the ball a little bit better than the 14 millimeter. Also, some of you guys, want to compare like the double black diamond with the vatic flash because they're the same shape very similar specs maybe they come out of the same factory i would say the surface well and actually now though, nothing about the surface also fairly similar uh, honestly this is they're almost identical like if, if it's tough for me to feel the difference between the vatics the vatic flashes and the black diamonds it'll be tough for you i will say that the flashes from from vatic are probably a better value Right, coming in at like 140, 130, whereas the Black Diamonds come in, I think at 180, maybe a little bit less. 
the black diamonds they actually feel more solid than the vatix i don't know what it is but when you strike the ball it feels more substantial and it's not like there's a difference in weight or anything but something about it it's kind of intangible maybe it's in my head i don't know these paddles the the vatic and the black diamond like you really can't go wrong with with either of them okay so i didn't pick the six zero paddles mainly because of the paddle length this to play with this to play with i have so many options and choices and i'm just testing a bunch of paddles right now one paddle that came in my lap that i surprisingly like is this one this is the pro xr this is zane's signature paddle it's just the way that it tapers. This shape right here is my preferred shape for a paddle. Technically, like the handle is not that much longer than let's say, let me, I don't know, let's pull out the carbon. Yeah, it's, it's actually like the same length, but I think it's just the way that the paddle face tapers. It just feels more comfortable for a two-handed backhand. The swing weight isn't nearly as high. This paddle is 14 millimeter and, and you know what? Now that I think about it, it is essentially a Hyperion 14 millimeter. Very similar specs, if not similar technology. They got foam injected into the core. I do like it. And honestly, if it wasn't so ugly, I would have considered switching to this paddle. Okay, now I'm gonna give an honorable mention to another paddle that I really enjoyed that was sent to me. This surprised me. This is a paddle by 11, A, 11, N? 11. This is the Zenith C8. They also come in another shape called the C7, which is elongated with a shorter handle. This is, I was told it's a thermoform paddle. It has this interesting pattern texture, very reminiscent of the carbon fiber you'd face you'd find on Gearbox, but there's a little bit of texture on it. I didn't know what to expect from this one, but I think this is a really good control pad, especially for like a hundred bucks. This was solid. All right. And then this leads me to, I guess, currently my two most favorite paddles. My second favorite paddle is bread and butter filled. I currently don't have one on me right now. All my friends are borrowing it, uh, but I think that paddle looks awesome. And for like 165, I think is what it's going for. I think it's a really good value and it plays really well. It is essentially a lighter carbon 1X. 16 in my opinion and right above bread and butter filth is my current favorite paddle not by much but it's my current favorite paddle and that is the rhombus r3 pulsar this thing is to me amazing it is like right in my wheelhouse it's elongated has a longer handle the weight is around 8.2 8.3 comes in stock i really don't have to weight it up that much i usually like paddles around the 8.3 to 8.5 range and it is just like the right balance it's also a little bit softer for like the thermoform paddles i think it plays a little bit softer than like let's say like carbon and six zero and vatic you know you're not lacking in power like if you really want to put away a ball with this it has the weight and the balance to really swing and you can really put away balls with this paddle and i also think i get the most amount of spin with this paddle versus any other paddle that i've play tested or played and also i haven't heard any issues with the rhombus paddles and the pulsar with delamination or disbonding or anything like that so that just gives me a little peace of mind you know all right so that's it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to like subscribe and comment with what paddles you are playing with now currently links and codes are in the description below to help you save a little money on some of these paddles full disclosure i may get a kickback if you decide to use my codes down below at no additional cost to you all right till next time play better i'm out